I'm Chris Palmer, 3D Documentation Engineer at Faro UK, and I've recorded this short video to guide you through using the scanner interface on the Faro Focus series of scanners. The first thing that we're going to cover is the initial scanner setup. When you open up the scanner, you'll present with the screen that's dissimilar to this one. You have the Manage tab, the View Scans tab, and the Parameters tab. If we first go and look in the Manage tab, you can see that this is broken down into Projects, Profiles, Operators, General Settings and Service. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the General Settings tab where I can set up some of the basic settings within the scanning unit. If I first go to the Sounds tab, this is going to allow me to change the volume of the scanner's internal volume settings. I can turn on and off touch by clicks. I can toggle whether or not the scanner makes a sound during the scanning process. I can toggle whether or not it makes a sound when it finishes the scan. I can toggle any sounds that issue during a warning. Similarly, the same sound is issued when an error occurs. If I next go into power management, I can now change whether or not the scanner goes into screensaver mode and what, what period of time that takes. And I can also select the option to dim the display during scanning to save power. I can go into the date and time settings and choose between the 12 hour and 24 hour clock and if I go to the select date format I can choose between the typical English, typical American settings. Language, as you would assume, allows me to change the language of the scanner unit itself You'll notice this changes as I scroll down. I'm just going to reset this back to English. If I go to my units tab, I can decide whether or not this kind of displays measurements in feet or meters. And similarly, the temperature gauge on the scanner can be set to display in Celsius or Fahrenheit. If I just go back and now go into the scanner details tab, this will give me the scanner name and I can define the owner of the scanner and put a value in this field. And if I scroll down you can see there's some important information about the scanner such as the serial number and the number of scans that have been captured on a device. Okay I'll go back now again and go back once more and we're going to go to the service tab so in this tab we can see whether or not the scan has had any errors or warnings issued on it and we can also see at the bottom the last service date of the scanner if I go into the custom support tab we can see the contacts available for different regions so we've got the UK and the US along with some of the other regions around the world. There is also a backup tab here which will allow us to back up particular elements of the setup on the scanner such as the operators and profiles to an SD card. We can give that a name and just save it out using this tab at the bottom. And if we've got some that we would like to restore Similarly, we can use the Restore tab via uh, and bring those back in via an SD card that they have been saved to. Okay, so the next thing we'll look at is setting up the scan project on the scanner. Again, within the Manage tab, you'll find the Projects tab. If we click this, we'll come into a menu which will have a default project already assigned. Clicking the plus button 
will allow us to set some parameters for this particular project. We have the project name, the parent project, the customer, the file base name, the initial number of scans and any additional information. So the first thing we're going to do now is just create a project which we're going to use as the parent project. So I'm going to call this for example office building and this will be the overarching project and we will then define sub projects beneath it. So I'll just type in office here office building I'm going to click OK. So that's OK. So I'm going to actually go back out of this now because you can see there's no parent project assigned to this so this will become the parent project that we're going to use. So if I go back to my tab and go back to my plus sign I can add another project below this and you'll see that the parent project is now just defined as the office building whilst we can call this particular project for example ground floor and this could be a way that we define up a survey of a particular building okay so I'm happy with that so I'm now going to just put some information in about this scan so I could define the customer name um, for example I'll just put Varro in here and I can also change the file base name now I probably want to actually call this ground floor as all of the scans will then be prefixed with the words ground floor so I can easily define them within my project later on okay um, the initial scan number I could actually change this if, if I was continuing a scan at a later date but we would leave this at zero if we were just starting from scratch and we can also put some additional notes in here if we, if we want to okay so if I go back now to look at the project you can see that the office building is defined as the parent project and beneath that is the ground floor if we just go back to this manage tab now within the manage menu we can go to operators and by clicking this we can actually define an operator um, who can be assigned to each individual scan project um, you don't have to do this but it can be helpful if you've got a number of different people using a particular scanner and we can just type in for example here I'll just put Farrell staff for example but you might you may have particular individuals who you'd want to assign them a job so we'll just type that in and click OK and we can put some more information in if we want to such as the company they work for and um, if, if you're using subcontractors and departments, phone numbers etc. Okay you can see that's selected now. Okay so we're now happy that our project directors have been set up on the scanner and the next step will be to set some scan profiles or scan parameters before we begin work. Okay so within the manage tab I go to the profile setting you will see that there are some preset profiles here so we've got indoor below 10 meters indoor above 10 meters outdoor below 20 meters outdoor above 20 meters we've also got the preview and H object HD settings which are essentially the lowest and the highest resolution and quality settings that we can have so if I click into one of these profiles now it will list all of the different parameters that have been selected to make up this particular profile so you can create your own individual profile with your favorite settings or settings that you use for particular indoor or outdoor applications and you do this via the parameters tab we don't actually do this in here but this is just to show you all of the parameters that are assigned to that particular profile so I'm just gonna go back to my home screen now
where usually there would be a start scan button here however I'm using a virtual scanner but if I use the drop down list at the top you can see the operator is set to Faro staff the project which we set up is ground floor the selected profile we have is indoor below 10 meters we've also got the eye safe distance the time of the scan the quality setting and the resolution setting so this is what we will be using if we were to press scan but we are actually going to go into the parameters tab now and I'm just going to quickly talk you through the different parameters available so within the parameters tab I can actually go back and edit the selected profile I'm using so if I click this icon I will then be able to go back into that same menu we looked at before however what we really want to look at first is resolution and quality so within the resolution and quality settings we have two slide bars the slide bar to our left will determine the resolution we have a plus or minus bar plus or minus button and we also have a slide bar to the left we have the quality settings which we can change again by the plus and minus signs or by the slide bar now we really need to understand the way that phase based scanning works now if we are to change the resolution of the scan the important thing is that what we are actually going to do is we are going to increase or decrease the point spacing so similar to a digital camera you increase the resolution you get more pixels the way the scanner works is if we increase the resolution to one to one for example at a 10 meter range we are going to have a point spacing of 1.534 millimeters so we're going to have points at every 1.534 millimeters if I knock this all the way down to 1 to 32 resolution at 10 meter range we are going to have a point spacing of 49.087 millimeters so a point every 49.087 millimeters you will also notice that some of these settings change now using this lowest resolution we are actually going to have a scan that is going to last about two minutes we're going to have a scan size that is going to be 1280 by 500, 534 points so that is going to be the resolution of our scan if we knock this back up to the top you will notice the scan time has now changed to 1 hour and 56 minutes whereas the actual scan point size that we are collecting is 40,960 by 17,067 so that is the resolution that is the amount of points that we will be collecting now with phase based scanning you also have the option to change the quality setting now essentially what this is going to do is it's going to slow down the rotation of the scanner itself so the way that phase based scanning works is it will actually capture in one axis multiple points and then it will take an average of those points to define the actual point which we we use or are given to us from the scan data so if I increase the quality settings to four times so I've got one to one resolution and four times quality this is essentially the highest setting that we can put the scanner on so this, the scanner will turn in the horizontal axis as slow as it possibly can to capture as much information at the highest quality if we are to drop this down you can see the scan time reduces however we're still capturing a similar amount of points but the actual quality of that data has reduced so by having a higher quality set we are going to have less noise in our scan and cleaner surfaces so essentially here what we have is the option to tweak to our liking the resolution and quality settings that we're going to use depending on the actual job that we're going to do and the object that we're going to scan so for example if we're going to scan a building generally a good setting would be somewhere around about four times resolution uh, quarter resolution and four times quality which is going to give us a nine minute scan so we're going to have a reasonable scan size and we're going to have a good point spacing and we can work our way around the building if we wanted to scan a particular object at such high resolution we would probably go for one-to-one 
4 ounce quality. Now we know this is going to give us a very large file size and it's going to take a long time to produce. Similarly, if we were just wanting to capture some quick scans for previews um, and we were going to define a smaller region later on, we might want to drop this right down to the bottom. So it really is the case of working out what, what works for you for that particular job. Okay, so some of the other options that we have in the parameters tab include the option to turn off the camera uh, and to scan with colour or without colour. This is going to add about, about three minutes to the end of every scan to capture the photographs. We can also select which sensors we are going to use, so we have the choice to use the altimeter, the compass and the inclinometer, all of which we can turn on and off. Note on the X series of scanners, you would also now have the option to turn on and off the GPS. And if we go back to the scan parameters menu, what we've mentioned before about scanning at different resolutions and capturing certain objects, it may be that you want to do a preview scan initially and then capture a smaller area of that previewed area in a particularly high resolution. So rather than having a full resolution scan at 360 degrees you might want to just capture a small area and you can do this via the uh, arrows here which are just highlighting the exact area and by clicking default area we can return this to a 360 scan back in the scan parameters menu we actually have the ability to set some advanced settings but first there are some additional information given with regards to eye safety and the scan duration and also importantly the file size that you're going to get from this particular scan along with the point spacing. If we just click on the advanced settings we have some additional hardware filters including clear contour and clear sky. The clear contour will essentially remove scan points which result from the laser point hitting two objects at once and giving an incorrect measurement usually at the edge of objects whilst the clear sky filter is a hardware filter which will remove any points which occur from the laser hitting no object at all, generally happening when scanning the sky. If you're using X series of scanners, you will also have the option here to, to enable far distance optimization, which will increase the quality of scan points captured further than 20 meters away, however will actually decrease the quality and accuracy of points captured below 20 meters from the scanner. So if we just return now uh, to our home screen via the scan parameters menu and just check those settings, you will see that if we go back now and pull down the drop down list again, it's now displaying all of those updated settings that we've selected in the parameters menu. So we'll now be ready to press the start scan button. I hope that brief guide has been useful for you. Should you require any further information, in the first instance, please refer to your Faro Focus Scanner Manual or contact your local Faro sales representative.